In the 1940s, the Soviets developed a tank design formula that they quite liked. As a result, they kept using it until very, very recently. And what this means for us is that, despite all their vehicles being quite different, they all look the same, which can be annoying, especially as thousands of these tanks are being used by both sides of the Russo-Ukraine war. Telling a T-62 from a T-64, or a T-90 from a T-72 is no easy task, until now. This video will take you through various methods that you can use to correctly identify Soviet T-Series vehicles, from the T-54 all the way up to the T-14. By the end of this video, you will be able to identify tanks from any angle, even when they are covered with ERA, camouflaged, or destroyed. Let's get into it. We'll use multiple methods in this video, but we'll start with the easiest. Let's assume you've got a nice side-on view and you can see the entire length of the vehicle. You'll want to start with the wheels, specifically the road wheels, which support the weight of the tank. If there are five road wheels, you've already successfully narrowed it down to three. It's either a T-54, T-55 or a T-62. These are the earliest three T-series vehicles and use these big steel road wheels with no return rollers, so you'll notice the track sags in the middle. If you see a prominent gap between the first and second wheels, it's a T-54 or a T-55. These are notoriously very difficult to tell apart and are usually just referred to as one item, but there is a way to tell. Very early T-54s had this unique wedge turret, but assuming it does have the more modern dome turret, the T-54 will have a small round vent on the right side of the turret roof. The T-55 will not. But again, nobody will judge you too much if you just say T-54 or 55. Anyway, if the five wheels look like this instead, with the gap appearing either side of the fourth road wheel from the front, you're looking at a T-62. If you can't see the wheels but suspect it's one of these older tanks, the T-62 has a shorter, fatter looking turret when compared to the T-54 or 55 and has the fume extractor in the middle of the gun rather than at the end. Shockingly, despite them being 60 to 70 years old, all of these vehicles have been seen in Ukraine. But anyway, for these two, you go wheels, then turret, then gun. But maybe the tank has more than five road wheels. Okay, if there are seven, it's a T-14. This is the newest Russian tank and is quite different to the others, with a distinctive unmanned turret and a large, almost Western style hull. It's usually seen sitting still, being towed away, or sort of cruising around not doing much of anything. Certainly hasn't seen any combat anyway, so we'll say no more about it. If there are six road wheels, then it could be a little more difficult, as this means it's either a T-64, a T-72, a T-80, or a T-90. And annoyingly, these are the four most common T-series tanks by a large margin. Let's start with the T-64 which was developed as a high-cost, high-performance vehicle for independent tank battalions. It used composite armour, had an autoloader, and importantly for us, used these strange little aluminium road wheels that were designed to be lightweight and less prone to getting caked in mud. T-64 road wheels are small, have no external rubber, and are almost flat-faced, with 10 shallow indentations around the rim. The T-64 notably also used an identical wheel for its idler, another unique feature. So if you can see six small, flat road wheels, it's a T-64. In the late 70s, the T-64 was developed into the T-80, which also has six road wheels. The T-80's wheels are larger though, and have an external layer of rubber around them. The wheels look almost western in origin, with ten bolts arranged around a large central hub. The idler is different from the road wheels, and has ten thin spokes. So, if you see six wheels that look like this, with decently sized gaps between each, it's a T-80. If the tank has six larger wheels, evenly spaced with almost no gap, it's a T-72 or a T-90. The wheels will have external rubber and either six or eight spoked indentations with a bolt in the middle of each, surrounding a central hub. The idler wheels are again different, smaller with five large thick spokes. The T-72 was initially developed as a cheaper, simpler T-64 to support mechanised divisions, but has since evolved into an arguably superior vehicle. 
T90 was essentially a modernization of T72, with an almost identical hull, so the road wheels and suspension systems are interchangeable, and we'll need to use other tricks to tell them apart. What a nice segue. Our second trick assumes you don't have a nice view of the side of the vehicle. Perhaps you can only see the back or top half of the tank. Have a look at the exhaust. It'll be in one of only two places. Most will have the exhaust on the left side of the hull towards the back. This is present on T5455s, T62s, T72s and T90s. There are many different styles of exhaust here and it can be used to tell more modern variants from older ones but there's no cut and dry rules. However, if the exhaust is at the back of the tank, you know for sure it's either a T64 or a T80. If it's relatively short, high up and covers more than half the width of the vehicle, this is a T64. Its exhaust is split into two sort of halves with rectangular shaped gratings. If it's a larger, boxier exhaust which is angled downwards with lots of smaller gratings, it's a T80. This doesn't change no matter what variant you're looking at and can be a very easy way to identify these vehicles from the rear. Unfortunately, this doesn't help you so much if you can just see the front of the vehicle, or perhaps only even the turret, which leads us onto our next set of tricks. But before then, time for this video's paid partnership, BetterHelp. BetterHelp is a service that's very important to me, because I use it myself. Most of my life I've struggled with some form of anxiety, and at a few points I probably would have called myself depressed, and that's where therapy really helped me. I had a video call with my BetterHelp therapist around once a week, and we talked about how I felt, what was happening in my life, my job, family, relationships, etc, and worked on how I could lessen the effect that anxiety had on me. I really enjoyed spending time with my therapist and felt I could talk to them about anything without judgement. They helped me a lot and I'm extremely grateful to them and to BetterHelp for helping me make positive changes in my life. If this sounds like something that might help you, you can go to their website using this link in the description. You answer a few questions and BetterHelp will match you with a professional who has years of experience helping people with struggles just like yours. It's all online and can be done from your phone or computer via phone call, video chat or messaging, whatever suits you best. You'll usually be matched to a therapist within 48 hours. And when you visit the link below or choose my channel during sign up, you can enjoy a special discount on your first month. It's worth it, I promise. Anyway, back to Soviet era main battle tanks. The turrets of these vehicles are almost always covered with ERA bricks, which can make it difficult to sell certain models apart, but we can still do some identifying. On top of all Soviet tanks will be a heavy machine gun for anti-aircraft and anti-infantry protection. Older vehicles like the T-54-55 and the T-62 were equipped with a 12.7mm DSHK or Dushka, but most T-series variants in combat today will have an NSVT or a more modern cord on the roof. And we can use this to our advantage, as it's a great way to identify a T-72. See, the T-64, T-80 and T-90 all mount their heavy machine guns conventionally, facing forward. But on T-72, the machine gun is mounted on the commander's cupola at the back, on the opposite side to the commander's main sight. So, if you see a vehicle with its sight facing forwards, while the HMG is facing backwards, that's a T-72. Another handy tip, if the machine gun looks like this, rather futuristic and mounted at the rear of the turret behind the hatches, you're looking at a T90, more specifically a T90M, with its UDP remote weapon station. But machine guns aren't always kept at factory standard, especially during a conflict. In fact, they may have been removed from destroyed or damaged vehicles altogether, so we need something else to tell these turrets apart. Soviet tanks almost always had these distinctive, circular, infrared searchlights on the front of the turret, which were used to enhance the crew's ability to fight at night. T-54-55s and T-62s will have this searchlight mounted high up on the front face of the turret on the starboard side, to the right of the gun. Later vehicles will have it mounted lower down, almost in line with the gun barrel. If it's mounted to the left of the gun barrel, towards the port side of the tank, you're looking at a T-64 turret. There is the small caveat that this turret was used on very early T-72s and T-80s, but that is simply because those models were using T-64 turrets themselves. T-72 and T-80 turrets will have the searchlight on the opposite side, to the right of the gun. The T-90 does not have an IR searchlight, as it has integrated thermal sights for the crew. 
T90s do, however, have these distinctive little boxes on the front of the turret, either side of the main gun. These are Stora 1 Dazzlers, and are used to disrupt the seekers on incoming missiles by blasting them with infrared light. You may see them with their covers off, glowing an ominous red colour. The Dazzlers are not equipped on more modern variants, and may have been removed from older T90s in service, but if you do see them, it's a T90. I will mention two small exceptions here. First, the T-84. This is a post-Soviet Ukrainian tank based on the chassis of the T-80, and certain models do have a welded turret and or Stora Dazzlers, as well as quite a distinctive bustle on the back of the turret. This is a much smaller hiccup than it seems however, as the Ukrainian army only operates about 6 of these. So if you see a T-80 hull with something that looks like a T-90 turret, you're looking at a T-84. Or, you could be looking at something called the T-80UK, a command variant of the T-80U that was fitted with Stora Dazzlers, so it would have the regular cast turret of the T-80. Spotting one is somewhat unlikely though, as analysts suggest just two were sent to Ukraine. One was destroyed and one has been captured. But identifying a T-series tank is not always doable with the turret on due to the tendency of these vehicles to suffer catastrophic ammunition explosions when hit, sending the turret flying into a nearby tree line. Even on a decapitated T-series though, we can do some frontal identifying. Even on Soviet tanks, the driver needed somewhere to exist and somewhere to see out of, and this can be used to help us identify things. On a T-54-55 or a T-62, the driver is offset to the left, towards the port side of the vehicle. On modern vehicles, he sits in the centre. On the T-64, T-72 and T-90, he has a single, wide periscope. But on the T-80, the driver has three smaller periscopes to give him better all-round vision. But what if you're trying to identify the tank from the back or even the sides and don't have a nice view of the exhausts or the road wheels? The Soviets were wise enough to assume that if they were going to have to use their tanks to smash through Europe, they should probably design them to be able to cross shallow streams and rivers without breaking down. So, they needed to carry around these long pipes to allow the engine to breathe while a tank was underwater. Fording tubes. Lucky for us, these are all different and are mounted in clear view on the turret. The T-64's fording tube looks almost like a big truck exhaust. It's relatively small in diameter, with one end having an even smaller diameter L-shaped curved tube and the other end having a metal plug sometimes with a rubber or canvas cover on the top of that. This fording tube is mounted high up on the back of the turret, behind the commander's cupola and mounted on top of the sheet metal box that is unique to the T-64. The T-80 has a massive fording tube on the back of its turret, larger in diameter than that of the T-64 and with no curved bend on one end. It'll either have two metal plugs or one boxy right angled adapter and will be mounted away from the back of the turret on big brackets. On some T-80s you'll also see this large, unique looking air intake adapter which can be used as an air filter or for snorkeling. The T-72 and T-90 fording tubes, in contrast, are much smaller than that of the T-64 or T-80 and look almost like a large handheld anti-tank weapon. Early T-72s mounted this on the rear left of the turret, but later vehicles and the T-90 have it mounted at the back of the turret, on the rear face of the rear storage bin. In a lot of Ukrainian war footage though, it is from the perspective of a drone. These tend to be flying above the tank, which is an angle we have not really covered yet, but have no fear. Even from above the tank, it can be easy to get positive IDs on what T-series vehicle you're looking at by casting your eyes to the engine deck. We can use the arrangement of the fans and vents to determine the tank. If the vehicle has two distinct horizontal sections of vents at the rear, it's one of the older tanks a T-54-55 or a T-62. The T-62, as it is a lot longer than the T-54-55, will have a much larger gap between the turret and the first horizontal vent. If it has a single horizontal vent at the very rear of the engine deck, it's either a T-72 or a T-90. Similarly, if it has a single or split horizontal section at the front of the engine deck, just behind the turret, it's a T-80, with this vent servicing its gas turbine engine. The T-64 is a bit unique. 
It has a large T80-esque vent just behind the turret, but also has this thin vertical vent running down the port side of the deck. In addition, the T64 has a downward slope on the other side of the deck towards the mudguards, whereas on all other vehicles, the back decks are completely flat. Now, I know that was a lot of information, so I'll do a quick recap for you with some real life examples. While we're here though, please do like the video if you've enjoyed it, leave a comment, or even subscribe for more content. I'd be incredibly grateful if you consider supporting me on Patreon, it really does help a lot. Anyway, what's this? This is a T80. Remember, it is the only T-Series vehicle with three vision ports for the driver. The T80 also has six road wheels that look like this, the searchlight is on the right side of the gun, the fording tube is a large diameter tube mounted off the back of the turret, the exhaust is big, boxy and at the rear, and the engine deck has a single horizontal vent just behind the turret. While this is a T54-55. They have five large steel road wheels with a gap between the first and the second with no return rollers, two sets of horizontal vents at the rear of the engine deck, the exhaust is on the back left, and the IR searchlight is high up on the right of the gun. The lack of vent on the top of the turret tells us this is a T55 rather than a T54. And this is a T62. If you can't tell the difference between the taller, more spherical turret of the T55 when compared to the T62, remember to look at the gun. The T62 has the fume extractor in the middle. Other unique features of the T62 are the five large road wheels with gaps either side of the fourth wheel, a longer hull than T55, and a larger space between the back of the turret and the rear vent. And this we can identify immediately as a T64. The IR searchlight is on the left side of the gun. Other key T64 features are the six small aluminium road wheels, the identical idler wheel, the smaller fording tube with the curved end, the engine deck with one horizontal strip and one vertical, and the wide, thin exhaust mounted high on the rear of the vehicle. This contrasts almost entirely with this vehicle, which is a T72. It, along with the T90, has six large road wheels, the searchlight is on the right side of the gun, the machine gun faces backwards, and, like the T90, it has an exhaust on the back left of the tank with a small, shorter fording tube and a single horizontal vent on the engine deck. The T90, while similar to the T72 in many ways, has its own unique set of identifiers. Any T-Series tank with a welded hexagonal turret, a remote weapon station on the roof, or Stora Dazzlers, you can be almost sure it's a T90. But as always, practice makes perfect. Do your best to identify the next T-Series tank you see without cheating and let me know how it goes. And obviously, despite this being a relatively long video, I have barely scratched the surface. Each vehicle has many different variants, each with different identifiers and operators, unique ERA layouts, etc, etc, and maybe I'll cover those if there's interest. Until then, please do like and subscribe if you enjoyed, thank you so much to those who already support me on Patreon, and I'll see you all in the next one.